Good morning, folks. I'm here with the fourth art journaling class for September, and we'll have one more, I think so, uh, at the end. And um, I am super excited to be here. I'm always excited to share with you with um, the art journaling pages and classes and techniques are just as much for me as they are for my in-person students and my the those of you who join me online and the reason is because I'm always picking up new um, new supplies and and new techniques and um, I'm doing some experimenting and maybe I'm combining new techniques uh, or all techniques in new ways to kind of see what happens. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited. Today we're going to do some color blocking. And I started with Canson watercolor paper and I covered it in Liquitex Gesso. The professional, it's very smooth and I like it. It has an S on it, so I call it smooth, but um, I think that just they just have that on there because it's for surfaces. <laughs> um, but then I also got some new Amsterdam paints, and I know that people really like these to jelly print with, so I got them to test that out. But then when I got the colors, they're so luscious, so I kind of just got started uh, on the art journaling page for this week. And right now I'm doing some color blocking, so I have a very, like, kind of um, kiwi-esque colored green on the left, and then kind of a golden yellow in the middle. Um, and then I left a white space in between, then while the paint on the left was still wet, I got a green that was just a shade darker and did some brushing into the sort of still damp green. So it got a very stripey kind of cool variegated effect. And after I saw that, um, I let those two colors dry and I just ordered three new colors of Titan Buff. I didn't even know it came in different shades. So I have a light Titan Buff, a medium Titan Buff, and then I also got kind of, it's called Warm Gray, but it's like just one more, it's like a dark Titan Buff. So very fun, but I started with the light, uh, the light and the medium, and I worked those together in my page. Now, instead of putting down one and then brushing the other on top, I put down puddles of both and kind of brush them together and I did get a little bit of yellow that was still wet on my mat into that and it's not necessarily what I wanted but I'm going with it and after I had this done um, I actually decided to turn my page around so originally my green was on the left and my kind of neutral was on the right but in the end I flipped it around and now my neutral is on the left and my green is on the right while the paint is still wet, I got out this Princeton Catalyst tool, and they're so cool. You can use them to carve into paint. They're a really great mark maker. A lot of people do use them in jelly printing and things like that. But I decided to drag some lines across from that wet into the dry yellow. And uh, so it carved the paint out of the wet and then scraped it into the yellow, and it was very cool. I, I know that I don't want to do too much overlapping of colors but I thought that that seemed like just like the perfect little touch there and now I'm using my fine liner and in that white spot I'm creating creating some kind of haphazard stripes and uh, it's fun I love stripes I love bold blacks and whites with with a bit of color a splash of color I think if you've kind of been joining me for a while you know that I really do enjoy a lot of neutrals with a splash of color and and you know I love a lot of color too sometimes as an artist it's just um, a little bit hard for me to kind of plan or picture things out that way and I'm not saying that I always have a plan either sometimes I just go for it and, and try to have a good time uh, so my fine liner here and and I picked this up from Donna Downey it's where I learned the most about fine liners but I have um, seen also like Jenny Doe use them and Jody Ole and a couple other people too but my fine liner is 50 50 golden fluid acrylic in carbon black and Liquitex airbrush medium it might even be golden airbrush medium but it's airbrush medium so it's 50-50 for me, and I like it. Still stays a bit shiny, and I can um, I, I can just draw with it. It's really great. So then this, I've got out a black archival ink pad, and uh, the my one of my favorite designs that I did for Viva Las Vegas stamps. It's this little doodle circle, and it just has like really great shape to it, and it's really fun to art journal with. You can always draw your own circles like that, but um, 
yeah, I have this one handy now. And the only thing I want to mention is that when I am using it, I turn it. So a few degrees to the left or a few degrees to the right so that the circles aren't always the exact same um, pattern. You know, it's not necessarily a repeatable pattern. I will say this because I'm working on watercolor paper. It has nothing to do with the stamp. It's all about the watercolor paper. I'm playing on the textured side of my watercolor paper, so the stamp doesn't have an exactly even surface to stamp down onto. So I'm going to go back in um, with the, I have some, those new Dina Wake, not Dina Wakely, I apologize, um, those new Diane Reevely Dilutions pens and uh, the black and white paint pens. And so I just use that to go in and kind of darken up that circle where it didn't uh, didn't stamp all the way down. And I just let everything dry. So I usually pause the video and walk away and let things dry and then come back or even pause it and do a quick heat with a heat tool. So just so you know, my my products are dry. I, I'm not <laughs> trying to do a bunch of stuff while things are wet, while layers are wet. Um, I got out my Stabilo Marksall and I used it to kind of scribble around the outside of those circles. I wanted to create a sort of grungy kind of area up there and it ended up looking kind of like a cool shadow and I liked that. Then the green inside the circles was still nice and bright and, and it really um, complemented the green that's further down the page. So that was pretty cool. I'm just kind of doing that over and over until I get the exact effect I want and then there we go. That's where it really looks good. It starts to kind of drip down and it's fun. Now the thing about Stabilo is that it will always be water reactive, so I'll keep that in mind. Um, after that dried, I got out my palette knife and some gesso, and this is, um, before I use Liquitex gesso, but this is Blick gesso, and you'll probably see this in almost every video that I do. I love the two gessos, and I love how different they are. I love the thickness of one, and I love the smoothness of the other, so I tend to use them simultaneously on the same page, and you can do that. Like, you're allowed to do that. You don't have to... You, you, you don't have to always use like one thing or stick with one thing. And on the other, the other, like the flip side, if you find a favorite technique or a favorite tip or a favorite supply or a favorite tool, like bring that in, use that, you know, you're going to find things that you like. And I, I have things that I like and hopefully they don't get too boring for you. I try to show things in different ways. So I just scraped some of that gesso over the texture only on the neutral side um, with my palette knife. So now here you're going to see kind of I'm pulling back out some of the new colors of the Amsterdam paint that I got. And this right here is a never before seen sneak peek at a new Umwell Studio stencil that I've designed and uh, it's so fun. I designed it for a back to school crop that we had a few weeks ago and it's <laughs> really fun. Uh, it matches our potty people. <laughs> That's what I like to call them. Um, so I, I mixed up some paints and I got a dark green and it was very like grassy kind of which I didn't uh, want to put on top of my page and so then I thought well maybe I'll just go with the dark the green, the second color of green that I used, and then I didn't like it. And then I got out this other color, this new color that I got that is actually very, very pretty. Um, it's very dark when it's by itself, and then when you start to spread it out on your page and thin it down, it gets this really gorgeous kind of teal color to it. And in the bottle, it almost looks Payne's gray, like right there. But in the end, I didn't like the way that turned out either. And mostly I think that was because um, I was a bit messy applying it through the stencil. But the great thing about acrylics is as long as they're still wet, you can just wipe them up and move on. <laughs> I wanted to see what it would look like with the color and the green, but I didn't like that either. Now here's where I had to be careful because that Stabilo is still water reactive at the top. The Stabilo Marks All pencil that I used to create that grunge with earlier. So I needed to be really careful there. So in the end, I knew, I really knew that I wanted those potty people there, so I s went back to my uh, Diane Reevely Dilutions pen, and that worked fairly well. You could use um, any of your favorite pens. Remember, if you're going to use felt tip pens on acrylics and like watercolor paper and stuff, it's going to eat up that felt tip, any of your pit pens or anything like that. So just be careful if you're using those. Illustration pens and expensive pens are not always... Um, are not something you should probably use while you're doing art journaling. We get too many textures and things going on. So so you can see they turned out a bit better now. They're still a little bit wonky and 
guess I just need to slow down when I'm working with my stencil, but I really enjoyed it. Oh, and then here, so this is, um, it's been a while since I did so much, uh, like, putting something down and not liking it and lifting it up. I feel like I did that quite a few times on this page, and, and that's okay. Like, a lot of times I say, oh, like, nothing's wrong, but, but if it's not really jiving with you and you're not really enjoying it, like, lift it up, take it away, what, you know, what's the point? Um, I, this was originally why I bought the fine liner was to do, you know, some scripty kind of fun stuff. So I definitely brought that back into the page today and, and I don't want, want that to be something that I only used at one time. Um, I did some splattering with the fine liner. Now it's a little bit harder with the fine liner because you kind of have to squeeze and then tap at the same time and, and paint does kind of go everywhere, but I really like that darkness, that black that that I've got in the fine liner. So I worked with that. This here felt a little a little specific to me, those big drops that were in the middle. And then, so then I tried to erase one and then I messed up and I erased a couple that I didn't want to. And then I accidentally <laughs> drug my baby wipe through that guy and I thought he was perfect. So uh, then I had to get out my fine liner and fake him. Can you believe that? I had to fake a splatter. <laughs> I just rounded out the edge there to make it <laughs> perfect again. <laughs> Perfectly imperfect. <laughs> and then as kind of like a final little thing here and this, I ended up doing this um, actually a, like 12 or 14 or maybe even 20 hours later. I thought the page was done already. But um, I got out, I just got this set of golden high flow acrylics from Blick and they are divine and I love them and so now they're kind of making their way on everything just like when I first got the Stabila Woodies uh, but I'm using it now to create kind of a fun shadow and at first I was looking for a drip effect but then I thought that it uh, competed too much with the neutral with the gesso scrape on the neutral I'm, n I'm not really going for a ton of like fake texture. I wanted it to be a bit more color blockish. So, so then I ended up spreading it out, which I thought was great. And it created kind of a shadow effect. So I did it at the bottom as well and, um, help that color kind of seep out. And then I'll use a baby wipe to daub up some of the color in the middle. And then that yellow can kind of shine through again, because it really is a glorious yellow. There we go. And that is it. Um, the page is pretty much done here. I will heat it dry. And uh, I did get out, I will get out a graphite pencil. So heat this dry and make sure that all of my paint is permanent and, and completely cured so that when I get out a pencil, I'm not carving into the paint, which is also a cool technique. If you have wet paint and a pencil, you can carve into it and create some really great texture and lines and, and kind of movement. It's very cool. Maybe we'll do that on our next art journal page. I'm always, always up for something a little bit different. Here's that graphite pencil now, and because the green had the shading from the top and then the yellow had the shading on the top and bottom, I felt like I needed some kind of border, just a tiny little bit happening on the neutral. And on some of my older art journaling pages, I used to border all the way, all the way around, but I this time it's a selective border on just the neutral color. So that's it. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you again in a week. And um, yeah, enjoy the videos. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe so that you're always um, up to par and you always know what's happening and uh, got some fun things happening. So yeah, subscribe and check out my other art journaling videos and uh, my Donna Downey videos where you could see um, our mixed media moods or whatever's happening. I'm just glad you're here. Thank you so much.